the Kraft Foods Company presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. Great Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of Parquet Margarine. Millions of women all over America serve Parquet because it tastes so good. Why, Parquet tastes like it should cost twice as much. To market, to market, to get some Parquet. Home again, home again, try it today. You like it, you love it, like millions who say their favorite margarine. P A R K A Y. Parquet margarine made by Kraft. Well, let's see what's doing in Summerfield. A big round October sun arose at 6.30. A big round water commissioner arose at 7.30. Now, at 8.30, they're both beaming and ready to make their contribution to life on this planet. Hi-ho, hi-ho, it's off to work we go. da da dee da dum dee hi-ho, hi-ho, it's off to school we go. da da <laughs> Little Leroy takes after me. Wish his voice would change, though. <laughs> all right, everybody, all aboard for school. All right, Elf. Leroy. I'll be right down, Unky. All right, Marjorie. Want to say goodbye to the baby anyway before I go to the office. I think she's in the kitchen with Bertie. I'll get it. I'll get it. Leroy's got it. Oh, boy, a telegram. Telegram. I'll get it. A telegram? Yeah, wonder if it's from Dewey. <laughs> wonder if he's answering my letter about appointing a federal water commissioner. Let me sign for it, Unc. Okay, well, all right. Hurry, Leroy. You don't need your middle name. There you are. Tip the boy, Unc. Oh, yes. Here you are. Thank you. Tip the boy. The telegram says... Leroy, I will read the telegram. You've got to sign for it. Who's it from, Unc? Huh? What does it say? Well, let's see. It's from Aunt Hattie. She's on her way to see Aunt Josie, and she's stopping in to visit us for a couple of days... Oh, for corn's sake. Who's coming? Aunt Hattie. Aunt Hattie? Aunt Hattie? Now, Bertie, let's not get nervous before she even gets here. Oh, my goodness. There goes our happy little family. (laughs) Ain't no use you crying before you even meet her. Come on, I'm going to take you back to your crib. There's work to be done around this house if Aunt Hattie's coming. Yes, yes. When's she coming, Unky? On this afternoon's train, it says. Oh, isn't that just like Aunt Hattie? Let you know so late you haven't got time to get out of it. Can't we tack a measles sign on the door, Unc? Leroy, we don't have measles. I'll go out and get them. You will not. <laughs> Aunt Hattie, she want me running around in middies and pigtails again. And the way she orders everybody around. Now, Marjorie, we have to remember that during the war, Aunt Hattie was a block captain. Wipe your feet, hang up your clothes, blow your nose. Why does she have to come snooping around? It isn't that bad, Leroy. Oh, no? Unky, remember how she used to sit on you? No jolly boys' parties, no dates? Now, children, we shouldn't be saying unkind things about your Aunt Hattie. She always has been interested in your welfare. And she undoubtedly wants to see the new baby. Couldn't we send her one of the pictures? It's too late for that. Uh, I mean, we'll all be happy to see Aunt Hattie. Let's try to remember that now. It's very nice of your aunt to want to come and visit us. Does everybody understand? Sure. But I'm going to get my blankets tonight and move out in the packing box. Leroy, we'll not abandon ship. You'll stay trapped in the house with the rest of us. (laughs) This is a time when our little family must stick together. What a character. I knew that was you ringing my little old doorbell. You did, Adeline? 
Uh-huh. Always seems to ring so sweet and clear when you press the button. <laughs> Come on in. Well, I will, but just a minute. I just dropped by to tell you I won't be over tonight. Oh. Yeah, the children's Aunt Hattie is coming this afternoon, and I shouldn't go out her first night here. I guess not. She won't be here long, will she? We won't rush her, but we don't think so. <laughs> She's on her way to visit Aunt Josie in Plainview. Well, better be off to the depot. Oh, must you rush, Throckmorton? I've hardly seen you. Uh, train time, Adeline. Maybe the train will be a little late. You don't know Aunt Hattie. <laughs> With her on it, that train doesn't dare be late. <laughs> Now, sorry about tonight, Adeline. I'll be in touch with you. Now, don't you get so busy with Aunt Hattie, you forget little old Adeline, you hear? Yeah, I won't. Rock Morton. Huh? If your... <laughs> your aunt's the kind that goes to bed with the chickens, maybe later in the evening you can call on you. Well, Aunt Hattie's a light sleeper, and she might hear cackling in the hen house. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta be off. I'll be in touch with you. Well, all right. Goodbye. Goodbye, Adeline. Sacrifices I make for Aunt Hattie. <laughs> for friends and health and daily food, we give thee thanks. Amen. Marjorie, you said that very nicely. Thank you. Well, Aunt Hattie... It certainly is nice to have you around the little table again. Marjorie, Leroy, and I have been looking forward to this all day. We certainly have. Leroy, let's contribute to the conversation. <laughs> huh? Oh, yeah, we certainly have. <laughs> Thank you. I always enjoy visiting relatives. Too bad you can only stay two days, Hattie. It certainly is. Yeah. Leroy, let's not contribute so quickly. <laughs> Well, it was so convenient to stop on the way to Aunt Josie's, and of course I had to see the baby. Oh, what a darling she is. Yeah. Too bad her eyes are blue instead of brown like the family. Well, Hattie, we can't expect too much. After all, I found her in the back seat of my car. When do we eat? I'm starved. <laughs> Growing boy, Hattie. You may start the potatoes, Leroy. Okay, let's go. Potatoes, Unc? Yeah, why don't you pass them to Aunt Hattie first, my boy? I'll take them last. Potatoes, Aunt Hattie? Uh, thank you, Leroy. Is that all you're going to take? Uh, plenty of potatoes, Hattie. I've always been very fond of mashed potatoes. But when we reach our ages, we all have to watch our diet. Don't we, Throckmorton? You seem to have gained a little. Uh, well, I, I haven't kept too close a check since somebody broke the bathroom scales. <laughs> and my, how you've changed, Marjorie. I have? Mm, you look very healthy. Rosy cheeks and uh, red lips. Well... Uh, you, Marjorie's beginning to use a little makeup, Patty, yes. Just a little, mind you, to bring out the blush of her cheeks. Well, young girls are so pretty, they don't really need makeup. I'd think that over, Marjorie. But Aunt Hattie... <clears throat> What's happened to the potatoes? Right under your chin. Uh, oh. <laughs> yes, I forgot to help myself. Well, I'll take one scoop. It's gravy, Mr. Gilsey. Sorry, I'm late. That's all right, Bertie. Will you serve Miss Forrester first? Gravy, Miss Forrester? Oh, my, yes. Although I usually have just a little salt and pepper on my potatoes. <laughs> this looks like Bertie's wonderful gravy. Yes, ma'am. Bertie, have you ever tried thinning it with water instead of milk? No, ma'am. Mr. Gillsleeve likes it thick and rich. Just the same, Bertie. Now, Hattie, I... there are two ways of doing everything. I agree. A right and a wrong way. Yes. Besides, Bertie, Mr. Gildersleeve is watching his diet now. Yes, ma'am. Aren't you, Throckmorton? Yes, ma'am. I mean, <laughs> Leroy passed me a little salt and pepper. <laughs> More coffee, anybody? Hattie? No, thank you. That'll be all then, Bertie. If you don't mind then, Mr. Gillsleeve, I'll let the dishes go till I get the baby ready for bed. Oh, fine, Bertie. Let's all go in the living room now and relax. Uh, Throckmorton, now, before we leave the table, don't you think we should get organized? Organized? Yes, sir. Dishes to be done. A baby to be put to bed. 
I'll take care of everything, Miss Forrester. You just go relax. Yes, Hattie. <laughs> Bertie's been taking care of these things very well. Now, now, Bertie, a new baby in the house means a lot of extra work. We'll make a game of it. I'll assign little missions to everyone to accomplish. Uh, little missions? Well, not a bad idea, Hattie. Uh, Marjorie, your objective will be to clear the table and crumb the cloth. Uh, Marjorie will be happy to, won't you, Marjorie? Yeah, start crumbing, Marge. <laughs> uh, Roy, you and Birdie are the task force in charge of Operation Dishwater. What? <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, start operating, Leroy. <laughs> Little Leroy washing dishes. Well, Hattie, let's you and I go in the living room and relax. Uh, Throckmorton, now you can be the task force in charge of Operation Garbage Can. Oops. No, we can't run the house without organization, can we? Yeah. All right, little army. Synchronize watches. Yep. We'll all be through within an hour, and then we can play authors. Oh, for corn's sake. Yeah. <laughs> Watch it, Leroy. You want to end up in the guardhouse? <laughs> See, Aunt Hattie let the sun come up this morning anyway. <laughs> yeah, I was worried about it for a little while last night. No use putting up the shades, Uncle Mort. She'll have them down again. Cold air seeps in, remember? <laughs> oh, yes. It's like a morgue in here. You're not kidding. Why are you children eating so early this morning? Well, I thought I'd get an early start for school. She wants to get out of the house so she can put her makeup on. Not so loud, you little weasel. Yeah, children, children. Don't eat so fast, Leroy. Don't tell me you're in a hurry to get to school. I'd rather get to school than get dishpan hands. <laughs> <laughs> morning, Miss Gilsley. Well, Bertie, good morning. How are things out in the kitchen this morning? Before I answer that, where's General Foster? Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, the general hasn't come down yet, Bertie, but I think you've been very understanding of Miss Forrester's little whims. It ain't the whims that bothers me. It's that inspecting. I'm going to hide under one of them rugs, and when she looks under there for dust, I'm going to go boo. <laughs> uh, well, Bertie, that just happens to be Aunt Hattie's way of doing things. Well, Bertie's got her way of doing things, too, but it ain't peeping under other people's rugs. Yeah, I know, Bertie. Or watering other people's gravy. Yes, well, we all have to try to understand, Bertie. Yeah. I'm trying to understand, Mr. Gilson. That's the spirit, Bertie. But what Bertie can't understand is peeping under other people's rugs and watering other people's gravy. Yeah, shh. <laughs> Not so loud, Bertie. Peeping under other people's rugs and watering other people's graves. Now, Bertie? There's two things Bertie can't understand. You know what them two things are, Mr. Gilsey? Yes, Bertie. That's right. Peeping under other people's rugs and watering other people's graves. <laughs> <laughs> now, Bertie, he's upset. Well, who isn't? You must admit Aunt Hattie's being a little unreasonable. A little? She won't even let a little kid keep a nice, clean mud turtle in his room. <laughs> Now, now, children, Aunt Hattie means well. Besides, she's only going to be here another day, we hope. Oh, good morning, Aunt Hattie. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Aunt Hattie. Good morning, Aunt Hattie. Uh, sleep well, Hattie? As a matter of fact, I didn't. Gosh, you had the best bed in the house. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's too good for our Aunt Hattie. What seemed to be the trouble? I hope the baby didn't keep you awake. No. I was thinking... Thinking? ...that there's entirely too much to be done here in one more day. So, in fairness to you all, I'll have to stay at least a week. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did you hear that, children? Aunt Hattie's going to stay at least another week. Isn't that nice? It certainly is. Yeah. <laughs> Seems Bertie dropped something again. <laughs> Sit down, Hattie. Let's all have a happy little breakfast. <laughs> prizes! Prizes! Yes, 
contest, there are 721 prizes in Parquet Margarine's big $50,000 contest. Twenty beautiful 1949 Ford sedans will be awarded. That means four people are going to win brand new Ford sedans every week for five separate weeks. And the grand prize winner gets a $1,000 bonus in addition to his Ford. And listen to these other prizes. Each week for five weeks, Parquet will award... 40 General Electric Table Radios, 20 Corey Coffee Makers, 20 Toastmaster Automatic Pop-Up Toasters, 60 new $10 bills. Now, you know the great Gildersleeve found a cuddly baby girl a few weeks ago. And he needs a name for her. Well, to enter this contest, send in your choice of a name. Just write your suggested name for the baby on an entry blank. They're available at your food dealers with contest rules. Or use a plain piece of paper. Send entry with one red flap from the end of a package of Parquet Margarine and your name and address to Parquet Margarine, Box 736, Chicago 77, Illinois. Be sure to enclose name and address of your Parquet dealer. Make a bid for your new beautiful 1949 Ford tonight. Mail your entry to Parquet Margarine, Box 736, Chicago 77, Illinois. This first week's contest closes October 16th. That's this Saturday, so hurry. Now let's rejoin the great Gildersleeve. Several days have dragged by since Aunt Hattie dropped in to rearrange the nest of our plump bluebird of happiness. Blue and not so happy. We find him calling on his friendly neighborhood druggist. Hello, Peavy. Yeah, hello, Mr. Gillespie. Nice morning. Is it? Well, I could be wrong. <laughs> Any clouds in the sky? Weather's balmy. Sunshiny. No, I'm not wrong, Mr. Gildersleeve. It is a nice day. <laughs> All right, Peavy. As far as I'm concerned, it's a very dreary day. There's a big, gloomy cloud hanging over my whole household. Uh, by the way, how is Miss Forrester? <clears throat> she decided to stay on at least a week. Well, those things can be very disturbing. You bet. Bertie's threatened to quit. Marjorie's unhappy. Leroy isn't eating well. And I'm just wasting away to a shadow. <laughs> well, no, I wouldn't say that. Now, what would you do in a case like this, Peavy? Well, that's a question. Shortly after Mrs. Peavy and I were married, a similar situation presented herself at my house. An older sister. Oh? Well, how'd you get rid of her, Peavy? As I recall, I turned to a quotation in Poor Richard's Almanac. Pretty sound advice in that quotation. She packed up and left. She did? What was it, Peavy? Now, let me think now. A rolling stone gathers no moss. No, that doesn't sound like the right one. Pretty sound advice, though. Yes, yes. yes. Think, Peavy. You have to remember it. A penny saved is a penny earned. <laughs> No, that doesn't seem to fit. I don't seem to recall it, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, my goodness. But I remember how we applied it. We killed her with kindness. <laughs> well, I declare, that's the quotation. It is, Peavy? Kill her with kindness, eh? Uh, figuratively speaking, you understand. Oh, yes. We went through some very trying times before we decided to do everything her way. Then things became so uninteresting around our house, she left. It really worked, huh, Peavy? Well, I'm here to tell you about it. <laughs> if she wanted to save coffee grounds, we saved coffee grounds. And if she... Thanks, wanted... Peavy. You've given me a great idea. By the way, how long did it take you to get rid of her? Well, two and a half years, but we got rid of her. <laughs> well, I'll see if I can't do it a little quicker. <laughs> So that's our strategy. Do you understand? Quite a plot, Unc. We're not plotting, Leroy. We're just trying to do everything her way so she can go on to Aunt Josie's and help her. We're really doing this for Aunt Josie's sake. You can count on us, Uncle. Fine. We'll all cooperate. Everybody understand? I've been trying, Mr. Gillsleeve, but there's two things I can't understand. <laughs> you know what they are, Mr. Gillsleeve? Peeping on the other people. I know, Bertie, and watering other people's gravy. That's right. But you don't count on Bertie. Bertie's known as a big cooperator. Now, I can see that, Bertie. <laughs> 
Uh-oh. Goodbye, everybody. Uh, well, hello, Hattie. Hello, Aunt Hattie. Hello, Aunt Hattie. Hello, children. Uh, did you have a nice shopping trip downtown, Hattie? Nice warm day for it. Yes, Rockmorton. I picked up quite a few things I thought you and the family needed. Oh, very thoughtful of you. And I charged them to you. Oh, very thoughtful of you. <laughs> Anything you think we need... Mm-hmm. That's nice to hear, Throckmorton. I've been thinking it over, Aunt Hattie, and I'm not going to use makeup for a while. Now, that's sensible, Marjorie. And I can't wait to get up those dishes. Oh. Oh, I didn't think you cared much for washing dishes. Oh, yes, I do. Keeps my hands so white and soft. Let's not overdo it, Leroy. <laughs> well, Hattie, after that big trip, you must be tired. Let's everybody in the house be quiet now while Aunt Hattie goes upstairs and rests. Oh, no, no. I feel invigorated, ready for work. Now, how about you? Well, anything you say, Hattie. Right, children? Yep, that's our plot. Watch it, Leroy. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> what do we do first, Hattie? Uh, first, I'd suggest that Marjorie bring in the wash, uh, Leroy rake the leaves, and uh, Throckmorton... You... The baby. Uh, i better go check. Excuse me, Hattie. I better go in. Now, now just peek in, Throckmorton. She may go back to sleep. Uh, now, you see, Throckmorton, you shouldn't have gone in so soon. Yes, you're right, Hattie. Yeah. Hello, baby. Kitchy, kitchy, goo. Kitchy, kitchy. Say something nice to Aunt Hattie. <laughs> like this. You'll never get her back to sleep. Oh, yes. I guess you're right, Hattie. Ta-ta, baby. <laughs> I can't let her cry like that. Don't pick her up. Humoring her is the worst thing you can do. But the baby doctor says it's all right to pick her up. Makes her makes him feel secure. There must be a young doctor. Uh, now, uh, you don't mean to tell me I have to stay here and teach you how to take care of a baby. Oh, no, 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 no. We'll, <laughs> we'll do it your way, Hattie. The right way. <laughs> back in your crib, baby. <laughs> Come along. He'll try it out and go to sleep. Yeah, ta-ta, baby. Have a good time. <laughs> Poor Richard's almanac had better start working. That's all I got to say. Oh, the week has passed fast, hasn't it, Throckmorton? Oh, yes, it's flown by. Mm-hmm. Don't you go to the office on Saturday morning? Well, uh, not this Saturday morning. Uh, nothing so important as taking care of things for you, so you'll have plenty of time to pack. Oh. Uh, Throckmorton, I feel this is a, a good time to say that I've noticed a very great change in you. You have? Mm. You've become so devoted to the baby, your family, and your home. I remember when you used to go gallivanting around town a little too often with girls. Oh, who wants to do that? <laughs> Uh, that's the telephone. I'll answer No, it. no, no. You run upstairs, Hattie. Packing, remember? <laughs> it's probably business anyway. Water Commissioner Gildersleeve speaking. Yoo-hoo, Throckmorton. Uh, uh, <laughs> hello, Adeline. Throckmorton, where have you been keeping yourself? Aunt Hattie is still here. Hasn't she gone to Plainview yet? No, but it looks as though she might Throckmorton, be... Throckmorton, you're neglecting me. I don't think you care for me anymore. That's not true. Let me hear you say it. Now, Adeline. Go on, say it. On Saturday morning? <laughs> See, you don't care for me anymore. You've been avoiding me like I'm an old witch. Throckmorton, who are you talking to? Just an old witch, Hattie. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> she, she hung up. No, Adeline's mad at me. Now, who'd you say that was? Uh, just an old customer, a little dissatisfied. <laughs> <laughs> well, Hattie, don't you think it's time to go up and pack? Uh, I suppose I should, but I told Bertie I'd give the house a thorough dusting before I left. Oh, no, Hattie, don't you tire yourself out before your trip. Leave everything to me. Well, if you insist, here's the mop. Uh, mop? And my nice big apron. Here, here I'll, I'll tie it around. Yeah, but, but, Hattie, don't we have an apron without ruffles on it? Well, that's my nicest apron. Now start dusting while I go back. Great. Oh, well, Custer made a last stand. I guess I can, too. 
I'll bet Custer didn't have to wear an apron. Now, who can that be? Oh, Judge. Well, hello, Mother Hubbard. <laughs> Stop bleeding like an old goat and come in, Judge, before somebody else sees me. How'd you ever get tied up in one of those things, Gildy? Not so loud, Horace. Aunt Hattie's here, and we're doing things her way. Why? So she'll leave. Why do you want her to leave? <laughs> What's on your mind, Horace? Well, the Jolly Boys are meeting tonight, and we want to be sure you'll be there. Don't worry, I'll be there. All right, Gildy, I'll tell the boys to deal you in. Uh, oh, oh, I didn't know you had company. Uh, you remember Judge Hooker, Hattie. Oh, yes. How do you do, Judge Hooker? How do you do, Miss Forrester? And Hattie's been visiting us, Horace. She's done a wonderful job helping us put our house in order. But now she has to go. We just hate to see her leave. Oh, I can see that. <laughs> Your contributions are in evidence everywhere, Miss Forrester. Of course, you seem to have an able assistant. <laughs> yes, Rockwalton has been most cooperative. And Bertie and the children have been splendid helpers, too. Uh, it's been our pleasure, Hattie. <laughs> In fact, everyone has been so nice to me these past few days, I, I find it difficult to say goodbye. Oh? <laughs> That's what I came down to talk to you about. When I started packing, I, I sat down on the bed and, and I nearly came to tears. <gasps> Nobody's been so nice to me in years. No, Hattie. You've all given me so much. I thought it would be selfish of me to pack and run, so I came down to tell you I'll stay. But, but, but what about Aunt Josie? Oh, she let me know when she needs me. Well, I guess I'd better get upstairs and unpack. I'm so happy I could almost cry. I'm going to cry. <laughs> oh! Don't forget, you may win one of the following big prizes by choosing a name for the Gildersleeve baby. 20 big, smooth-looking 1949 Ford sedans, 200 beautiful General Electric radios, 100 Cory coffee makers, 100 Toastmaster electric pop-up toasters, and all kinds of cash prizes. Why, in these parquet contests, there are 721 prizes in all. So, just write your choice of a name for the Gildersleeve baby on an entry blank obtainable at your dealer's. Then, send entry with one red end flap from a package of Parquet Margarine and your name and address to Parquet Margarine, Box 736, Chicago 77, Illinois. But hurry, this week's contest closes at midnight this coming Saturday. <laughs> That was your ring, but I didn't expect to see you tonight. Yep, Adeline, I'm doing the town. Well, good. Don't tell me Aunt Hattie left. Uh, she's leaving in the morning. Funny thing happened, Adeline. She got a wire from Aunt Josie tonight telling her to come at once. She did? Yep. She has to leave. But you know, Adeline, she's a well-meaning soul. Oh, I'm sure she is. She looked like it from the window. I'm almost sorry I sent that wire. <laughs> What's this, Adeline? Wasn't that naughty of me? I guess only a little old witch would do a thing like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, so that's why she got two telegrams. I sent one, too. <laughs> Good night, folks. You thrifty homemakers have probably noticed that cheese prices have come down, and cheese is a protein food, a main dish food. In fact, ounce for ounce, no other basic food matches cheese for high quality, complete protein, for calcium, phosphorus, and other nutrients from milk. Yes, cheese is a bargain in nutrition. So for golden good, lower cost main dishes, get Kraft's famous pasteurized process varieties. There's medium mellow Kraft American or sharp Old English. And for rich yet mild cheddar flavor, there's the delicious cheese food, Velveeta. Remember to buy cheese the next time you shop. This is NBC.